What's up everyone, it's Josh from the Architect Student Blog and welcome back to another video. In today's YouTube video we've got another tutorial for you and it is how to create a 3D perspective section. So I'm going to show you how I made this graphic here and just take you through the various different steps of the software that I use and, and how I created this image. Now, as you'll know, my go-to software is SketchUp and Photoshop, so that's the software that we'll be using for this tutorial. I'll be honest, this is such a simple, simple section to do. I think it took me about two hours in total from start to finish and that included modelling the whole thing. So it's a really useful tool to have. I think one of the mistakes that I made at university was that I actually overthought a lot of my sections and I thought that if I didn't have the technical detail in there that I, it wasn't really going to come across quite as well. I think this will show you the complete opposite. You can just leave your wall thicknesses white or without any detail or with a solid colour and they will still come out really well. I think the difference with this is it's going to really give anybody looking at your project quite an in-depth view of what the interior spaces are going to be like and it's something that I really wish I'd utilised whilst I was at uni. So right, let's get into the video. So here I'm just starting with a basic box model of my project. I've got the stairs in there, I've got the general wall layouts, nothing too detailed I'll be honest and all I'm doing here is just starting to add the window openings. Obviously, I haven't gone into too much detail of how I've got to this point because everybody's project is going to be different. But yeah, it's very, very straightforward. You just model it up. You can imagine you sort of, you can either model it in section or model it completely with the wall thicknesses. But for the purposes of this video, I've just quickly modeled it out in section. As you can see here, I'm just running through, adding all the window and door openings just to really start to bring it to life. The next step was to add the actual windows and doors themselves. Now I'll be honest, it's something that I think really students should use a lot more. I actually just downloaded all of the windows and doors that I've used from the 3D warehouse. If somebody's already modelled it up, I really don't see the point in modelling it yourself, taking that extra kind of half an hour, whatever it might be, to model a window perfectly. If somebody's already done it for you, just download it from the 3D warehouse, add it into your model and just place it around where it's required. As you can see here, I'm just playing around with the, the, the size of the opening and the fenestration. I did change that for a few of the windows so that we're just more kind of clean and sleek, open paned windows rather than having any fenestration at all. Um, they've come in as components. I really recommend using components because it's going to make your life so much easier if you ever have to make changes to the model. Um, as you can see here, just quickly modeling up some windows, dotting those all the way around the model. And I think you'll see from this process, it is a really simple model and image to produce. It's actually getting the level of detail of having, you know, the bifold doors, which I've downloaded here, um, and go into that level of detail, which is what's going to make the section come to life. I think section drawings, you might not need the technical detail, but if it's going to be an interesting and intriguing drawing, it certainly needs a, a good level of detail to come through and stand out when you put it up on the board for your crits. So the next step, as you can see here, I'm just adding the internal doors. Again, you can keep them quite simple, but I quite like this oak door here, which is why I've decided to put it into the model. It came with its own sort of frame, which made my, my life quite a lot easier. Now for the purposes of this I don't recommend doing it this way but for the video to try and speed things up I actually just scaled the drawings to suit the size of the openings. That's not really what you should do because that was scaling everything so to get that to fit I've scaled the door handle and the door frame which wouldn't obviously wouldn't be what I'd recommend but for the purposes of this video and to be quite honest from a contextual point of view you're not really going to be able to read that from the distance that you'll be looking at the, the section from by the time the video is finished so that is another little quick tip if you are struggling for time with your project just use the scale tool to get them to fit then I'm just adding a roof light in again if you can add a little bit more detail things like roof lights and things like that it is just going to give the section a little bit more intrigue I then went on to add the feature pitched roof windows which again just add that extra level of detail to the section and make make it stand out rather than it being kind of one big block mass of white section line going through you'll actually be able to see the, the thinner window detail um, as you can see here I'll be quite honest 
some of the junctions they're going to need steel work and all that kind of thing but for the purpose of this video we're just giving a, a representation of the overall project to give an idea of the interior spaces I am not worried whatsoever about the technical detail if you wanted to see a bit more to do with the technical detail go and check out one of my previous videos where I actually show you how to add the technical elements to the project but for the purpose of this video I really wasn't worried about any kind of technical elements I was literally just trying to get an overall 3d section just to give a flavor of how the building is going to look I think it's a really good one you know if you wanted to take it later down the line and add that technical detail you certainly can but it's a great drawing and image to produce just to give everybody an idea of how your project's going to come together This is one of the key key points now as you can see me doing here I'm starting to add furniture I'm starting to add you know intricate levels of detail which is really what brings the section to life if you just model a very plain building nothing going on on the inside of it no indication of what the rooms might be used for that drawing isn't going to come across anywhere near as well as something that's got all of the furniture that would be in that room so for example what, what I'm doing now this is kind of like a relaxed roof terrace area um, in the office building that I'm creating I've just added a patio dining set so people obviously you can imagine people might go out there and sit and eat their lunch uh, and it's really this kind of level of detail that brings the drawing to life and moving on now to the kitchen again not a major part of the project but to have that level of detail same again just go onto the 3d warehouse I just found a modern kitchen that I like the look of didn't change very much of it at all other than getting some of the units that turned around the corner and were kind of blocking the view of the, the other parts of the kitchen and I think that that's the way that you've got to look at this drawing don't hone too much on the technical detail but actually focus on the detail of furnishing the, the rooms making it look like a lived in section and that's what's really going to make this section stand out when you pin it up and then I just continue the process adding more and more furniture The next step was just adding some context. Now I'll be honest, for the purposes of this video, I downloaded a cityscape from the 3D warehouse. Uh, I then just used the section tool, which is Command Y if you're using a Mac, um, just to cut all of that back to where I wanted it to be within the section. Well, I know when I started, I had part of my model in section, but I still wanted to cut into the elements that I'd added. So obviously taking that section plane just so that it cuts through the windows, cuts through the doors and the roof lights and what have you, so that you do get that level of detail to see the difference in the, the construction. Again, going into the styles tab and taking away the section fill, um, 
you can change the colour of the section fill but I think it does always look a lot nicer if you just use a, a white, a, a black and white because I think sometimes the, the, the colours can look a little bit heavy on the section and you can always add that in in Photoshop at, at a later date anyway. As you can see here, I was actually toying with the idea of whether I was going to do it three-dimensionally or not. Originally, I was looking at whether or not I might do it uh, as a parallel projection, but I think when you look at it popping back into the 3D, it just looks so much better and brings the whole project to life. I just started to add some more detail to the context here, just adding some proper window openings. Now, the one thing that I will say, and the mistake I even made whilst doing, the, doing this tutorial, is export your scene um, before you go to town on the detail. I, I went and added all of these windows, and by the time I'd actually set it up within Photoshop with the amount of, with the amount of detail that I wanted on there, half of this wasn't even seen anyway, so slightly wasted time, and again, always a good idea to just set your scenes first, export them, and see what's actually gonna fit within that scene before you go too far uh, modeling the detail. But again, I think adding that level of detail to the context will just make a massive difference to the overall section. If you just got big blank blocks sitting behind it, that's fine, but just adding some window openings, which quite simply, again, were downloaded from the 3D warehouse and just copied and pasted around, it just really brings it to life. Then just adding some vegetation. These trees actually came with the model that I downloaded and they are absolutely awesome. I love the way that they look. They, co they come through as a line drawing when you switch your style to black and white. So I was over the moon with finding these. The next step was exporting the scenes and one of the things you're definitely going to want to do is change the image size as you export it so you're going to want to go into options. I normally have it at about 8000 pixels, that will probably only just be bigger than A3 so you might need to increase that even more if you're looking to do A2 or A1 drawings. I exported just the section on its own to start off with. Um, and then what I did is then I exported the context separately. Um, you'll see why a bit later on. That just gives me a little bit more control about the intensity of each of the elements. I want the section to stand out, so I want that to kind of be more prominent. Um, and by exporting the context separately, that's just gonna allow me to adjust the transparency in Photoshop so I can just make it look a little bit less intense and sit more comfortably behind the section. But yeah. Simple SketchUp exports, no V-Ray, no render engines, it is literally straight from SketchUp into Photoshop as you'll see here. Um, as you can see, half of that context that I spent the time modelling up and adding the windows for didn't end up being included within the, the image anyway, so just something to be aware of. Uh, and as I discussed here, I'm just putting a layer mask around the section and then I'm just adjusting the transparency of the context behind it. So it's still visible, but obviously not quite as intense as the main section itself, so it just sits in the background a lot nicer. Um, I think it's a, a subtle but kind of key thing to do, just to make your section really pop from the rest of the context. So yeah, that's pretty much the basic layering of the section. Now it's time to add some more detail. So to add some more detail, what I did is I used dimensions.com, formerly Dimension Guide. The, this is the best website for just simple 
um, silhouette cutout people. I, I'll be honest, for the purpose of this video and the speed, I just copied and pasted the JPG images online. You can download them as DWGs. I would recommend doing that, building yourself up a bit of a library, then exporting those as a PDF to scale so you don't have to mess about like I am right now, getting them back into black and white um, and probably messing around with the overall resolution of them, especially if you're working at bigger scales. Uh, but yeah, I just started to add these people. Again, as we said earlier in the video, if you can make this section look lived in, it is really what's gonna bring it to life. As you can see here, we've got kind of bathrooms, meeting rooms. There's so many different uh, rooms and, and things going on within those rooms. We need to add the people within them to make them really come to life. The detail itself is okay, but if you can start bringing people in there, it's just gonna give that extra element of scale uh, and I think really make a difference. I then just continue the process, adding more and more figures. Again, all from dimensions.com. I will put the link in the YouTube description below until I thought I had enough people in the section to make it look lived in. So the next step was just adding some clouds. Again, you can draw these yourself if you wanted to. Maybe I'm a little bit lazy. I just downloaded a PNG cloud from Google. Um, I used the magic wand tool then uh, to select just the cloud on its own. I then right click and select create work path. Um, once I've made the work path, I just adjust my brush size to sort of two or a three, then right click again and say stroke path. What that's gonna do is use the brush tool and just stroke along that path. As you can see here, the first one that I did was a little bit thick, so just went back in, deleted that, got back to the work path, changed the size of the brush, dropped it down to that sort of two or three uh, to give it a nice thinner line again, because in the context, we don't want it to be too overbearing. Um, and as you'll see here, just click stroke path, and that gives me the cloud outline that I wanted. With the original PNG, because I wanted the cloud to have uh, a thickness if I wanted to bring it sort of in front of anything, I actually just went into image adjustments and turned the brightness all the way up on the original PNG. So that actually gives the cloud a solid fill now as well. Um, again, if you're an illustrator, these things are so much easier to do, but as somebody that uses Photoshop a lot, that is my little workaround to get clouds. I then just repeated the process for various different clouds, dotted them around the section, uh, and again, it just adds that extra level of detail. As I dot them around, I do just make sure that some of them go behind the buildings as well, just to add that extra level of depth to the drawing. To do that, all I'm doing is just creating a layer mask on that particular cloud drawing in and around the context. To do that, you just select the area that you want to mask, and then in the bottom right hand corner, you'll see the box with a small circle in the middle. That is the layer mask tool. That's how to just make it sit behind, and it means that if you do need to edit it in the future, you can just delete the layer mask and it doesn't affect the original image. Next, an absolute necessity in any architecture render, I am sure, is just adding some birds. And then finally, the only other thing that I did was use the layer mask tool once again, um, just to get rid of the lower lines um, that just made it look like the, the basement was actually submerged within the ground which was the look that i was trying to go for so there we have it that is how you very quickly and easily create a 3d perspective section using just sketchup and photoshop as always if you've got any comments or questions please leave them in the comments below i'll be answering all of them if you like the video please like and subscribe and as always we'll see you next week